Are you someone struggling with confidence when it comes to going to the gym? Or do you maybe just want to build some muscle at home? This is the video for you. Here is a full home workout split. Hello all, welcome to today's video. I know it's been a while, hasn't it? I don't remember when the last time I made a video was, but you'll see it on your screen now. <laughs> but today I wanted to make a video for all of you lot out there that maybe want to get into the gym, but don't quite have the confidence yet. Or for those of you out there that just simply want to train from home and don't want to worry about buying a gym membership or going to the gym. If this sounds like you, then this is the video for you. So please help me out, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now I don't want to make this intro too long, so let's get straight into things. What I'm about to show you is a five day split with all workouts being performed at home. All you're gonna need for these workouts is yourself, a couple of items of furniture, which you'll see in the demonstrations of the exercises, and a pair of dumbbells. The more dumbbells you have, the better you'll be able to get on with this. But for starters, you just need one pair of dumbbells. So I know some of you may not have the confidence to go to the gym because maybe you feel a little bit weak. You might not feel like you belong in the gym. I wanna tell you right now that you shouldn't feel that way and that everyone is welcome in the gym. But I do understand if you wanna build a little bit of muscle first before you start. And that's exactly what you can achieve with these home workouts. If you are someone who just wants to build a little bit of muscle, wants to get lean, just wants to, you know, look good in a sense, then you can achieve all that just by these home workouts. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> One important thing to know when you're getting into training like this is to understand the importance of your diet. The way you look is gonna be largely determined by what you eat and how you eat. So you need to take this into consideration. You need to decide whether your goal is to specifically put on size and muscle or to lose fat. Whatever the goal is will determine what your diet looks like. If you come from a place of being quite skinny and you want to put on size, you need to be going into a calorie surplus. And if you come from a place where you want to be dropping fat and losing weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. I'm not going to go into too much detail over these today, as the main focus of the video is the workouts, but please do Google what a calorie surplus and a calorie deficit are. Please use the calorie calculator below to work out what your maintenance calories are, to work out how much you need to eat to put on weight, and to work out how much you need to eat to lose weight. Check it out in the description. Okay, so let me give you a brief rundown of the five workouts first before we get into them. On day one, we're gonna be doing a push day, so that's gonna be your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. On day two, we're gonna be doing a pull session, so that's all of the muscles on your back and your biceps. Day three, we're gonna be doing legs. Day four is gonna be your upper body, so that includes your back, your chest, your shoulders, everything above the legs. And then day five is gonna be lower or leg day again. So you'll probably notice there's seven days in a week. I've only given you five workouts. That's because I want you to have at least two rest days. What a lot of people don't understand is that your rest days, not only are they really important, but they're actually where your body grows. We go to the gym, we work out to break down the muscle fibers in our body, but it's that rest and recovery that rebuilds and repairs them stronger for your next session. So make sure you're getting in at least one rest day per week. My personal recommendation would be at least two. Now, if even this seems too much, which I understand it might, five days a week working out, if you're going from zero, it might be too big of a jump. You can do three days, you can do four days, you can do two days. You take these sessions, this workout plan, and make it work for you. For example, if you were to do two days a week, you could just do the upper and the lower session. If you were to do three days a week, you could do the push pull legs. If you were to do four days a week, you could do push pull legs and then choose either upper or lower, depending on which part of your body you wanna work on. So like I say, take these workouts and make them work for you. When you take your rest days, it's up to you, but my personal recommendation would be to work out no more than three days in a row before you take a rest. So personally, I'll take a rest on a Wednesday and on a Saturday. So with all that explained, I hope you have bared with me. We're now gonna go on to the workouts. And I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do on each day. All right, so just before I get into the workouts, 
We're gonna be doing rep ranges for each of the exercises that you see. So you may see, for example, an exercise doing eight to 12 reps. This is because we want to be applying progressive overload. Progressive overload, put simply, is us doing a little bit more each week to get stronger. So if on one week, say you were doing bicep curls and you did three sets of eight reps, the next week you may try and do three sets of 10 reps. Or for example, you may have done three sets of 12, you're at the top of the rep range. Now you increase the weight a little bit. Maybe you go from a five kg dumbbell to a six kg dumbbell and you drop the reps back down. Maybe you do three sets of eight this time with the six kg dumbbells. So make sure you do that. This is why I do say if you can get more dumbbells, that will be better, but you can still make some significant gains with the one pair. So let's start out with the first workout on the split, your push day. Okay, so we're gonna begin with the first exercise of your push day, and that is gonna be push-ups. We're gonna be doing three sets of as many reps as possible here. So the idea is each week you're gonna try and do a few more reps than the week before. With the push-up, make sure you keep your elbows tucked, you come down to 90 degrees, don't rest your chest on the floor, and then press back up through your elbows. If you can't do a push-up as of yet, you can make things easier by starting the movement off from a little bit higher. So maybe use a chair or if necessary, use a countertop. Start from there and work your way down until you're able to do a push-up on the floor. Okay, so for our next exercise, we have a pike push-up. This is another body weight movement and we're gonna be doing three sets here, again, of as many reps as possible. This is quite a hard body weight exercise. So if you wanna make it a little bit easier, you can reduce the angle, bring your chest down a little bit closer to the floor. But failing that, best thing you can do if you can't do a pike push-up is to just do a dumbbell shoulder press, like you can see on the screen now. Just make sure with the shoulder press that you bring your elbows forwards and in. You don't wanna be starting back here. It's gonna put your shoulders in a compromised position. And make sure you press up and inwards, as you can see on the screen. If you try it the way you can see on your screen now and you struggle with your core stability, you could always sit on a chair to give your back some support or just rest your back up against the sofa. Try it, see what works for you. Okay, so next we're gonna go into our first tricep movement of the workout. It's gonna be a dumbbell overhead extension. With this exercise, make sure that you keep your elbow as close to your face as possible. Some people like to say, wear your elbow as an earring. Whatever makes you remember, I suppose. Keep your elbows close. If you find it tough to do it with just one hand at a time or one arm at a time, you can do it with both hands or both arms at a time as well. And work your way up to doing it just one arm at a time. The advantage of doing it one arm at a time is that you don't have one arm taking the lead over the other which could create some imbalances. Play around with this, see what works for you, and try and work your way up. For this exercise, we're gonna be doing three sets of 12 to 15 reps, and we're gonna be doing a dumbbell fly. And we're gonna focus on getting a nice stretch on the chest in the lengthened position, and when we come up to the top, we're gonna to focus on getting a nice squeeze on the chest. You wanna keep a slight bend in your elbow with this exercise. You don't want to have a completely straight arm, and if you have a bench for this exercise, that would be ideal because of course, if you do do it on the floor, it means your range of motion is limited, but it's still absolutely fine to do it on the floor if you don't have a bench. And trust me, you will still make some gains. Okay, next we're gonna go back to our shoulders and we're gonna be doing a dumbbell side raise for three sets of six to 10 reps. I see a lot of people doing this exercise wrong. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is bring your arms forward, have them dumbbells at about a 45 degree angle, you're gonna lead with your elbows, as you can see in the video demonstration. And at the top of the movement, you wanna make sure that your wrists are at most parallel with your elbows, if not lower. And now we're gonna finish off the workout back with another tricep exercise, a dip. This is another body weight exercise, and therefore we're gonna do three sets of as many reps as possible. I'm using a chair to do the dips. If you do have a pull up and dip station and can do it on that, that would be ideal, but don't worry if you don't. If you wanna make the exercise a little bit easier for yourself, you could go from the floor like you can see on the screen now. Work your way up to be able to do it on a chair or some type of leveled surface. And if you wanna make it harder, you could also elevate your feet so you could get an increased range of motion. So that's your day one. That's your push workout. It's gonna train your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. So let's move on to the second workout, which is gonna be pull. Okay, so we're gonna start this pull workout with a compound movement. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's a movement which works multiple muscles at the same time, and that's gonna be a table pull-up. It's gonna work all the muscles on your back with a focus on your lats. 
The idea here is you're gonna pull your body weight up and bring your elbows behind your back. Again, if you've got a pull up and dip station or one of those pull up bars that you can put on your doors, I know I've seen people have those before, that would be the ideal. If not, this is a good substitution or you could do it with a chair. And if you wanna make things a little bit easier on yourself, you could do the exercise that you could see now, which is essentially a pull up just on the floor. Make sure with this exercise you tuck your elbows in, make sure you push yourself up with your elbows, and again, make sure you squeeze your back at the top. Okay, so we're gonna move on now to a bit of a simpler exercise. I know those table pull-ups look challenging. We're gonna go with a wide dumbbell row. So the focus of this exercise is gonna be on your upper back, that's your traps, your rhomboids, etc., etc. What you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your elbows flared out wide to about a 90 degree angle from your body, and you're gonna pull those dumbbells up as high as you can. A big tip for all back exercises is always think about pulling from your elbows and just simply using your hands as hooks to hold onto the weight with. So pull that weight back with your elbows, squeeze your upper back as you do it, and then lower the weights back down slowly. And we're gonna do this for three sets of eight to 12 reps. The next exercise are gonna be targeting your rear delts. They're technically a part of your shoulder, but I always put rear delts on a back or a pull day as I feel they fit in better there. So the idea behind a rear delt fly is you're gonna to wanna to have your arms at roughly a 45 degree angle as you pull up to the top of the movement, which is the resistance path for your rear delts. We're gonna be doing three sets of 12 to 15 reps in this exercise. And just make sure you keep your arms out at a 45 degree angle when you come up to the top of the movement and control the weight slowly on the way back down. So now that we've trained your back, we're gonna move on to some biceps. That's what a pull session is. It's your back and your biceps in short. And we're gonna do some dumbbell hammer curls for three sets of eight to 12 reps. As with all bicep movements, we wanna make sure our elbows are stuck to our sides. We don't want our elbows to move during the movement. And you simply want to curl the dumbbell up in the angle that you can see on your screen now from what I'm showing you, and then lower it back down slowly. Do your curls one arm at a time. Make sure you completely finish one rep before you begin the other. At the bottom of the movement, your arm should be straight and you should feel a little bit of tension in your tricep. As you curl, bring the dumbbell slightly across your body to get more of a contraction on your bicep. Be sure to keep your shoulder firmly in place and make sure the only muscle that's working in this exercise is your bicep. Simply just curl that weight up. And finally, we're gonna end with a dumbbell preacher curl using the sofa. Just do as you can see here. Lean over your sofa slightly. And the idea behind a preacher curl is you want to have your elbows out in front of you. And that's gonna target the short head of the bicep. One important thing with dumbbell curls is you wanna make sure you don't curl that weight up all the way up to your shoulder. Only curl up to roughly the point that you're seeing me do it in this video here. Okay, so that is our pool session done. That's day two. Now let's move on to day three with our first leg session. Okay, so we're gonna start this leg day with an exercise that most gym bros absolutely hate. It's the Bulgarian split squat. Normally in a gym, you'd have your other leg rested up on a bench or something like that. But for improvisation purposes, you can just put your leg up on your sofa or maybe on a chair. You just wanna make sure your behind leg is elevated slightly. This exercise is gonna be focused on your quad, which is on the front of your leg. And it's gonna be targeting that quad on the leg that's out in front of you. You're gonna to wanna to drop that back knee close to the floor, hold, and then press up using your front leg. Make sure that you put all of your focus in on that front leg. Remember, we're trying to stretch the quad on the way down and then squeeze the quad on the way up. Having a strong mind-muscle connection is very important in most exercises. If you wanna make this exercise a little bit easier, you can, of course, just do normal lunges with your behind leg on the floor. And for this exercise, we're gonna be doing three sets of eight to 12 reps. So now that we've trained our quads, we're gonna move on to the next exercise, which is gonna target your hamstrings, and that is a dumbbell RDL. We're gonna be doing three sets of eight to 12 reps here, and I see a lot of people do this exercise wrong. As with every other deadlift, a dumbbell RDL is a hip hinge movement, so you're gonna to wanna to focus on pushing your bum to the back of the room, and a really important thing is to not focus on how you're putting the weights down, but simply focus on how you're pushing your hips back, and you'll find that the weights drop down automatically. Only go down until you feel a stretch in your hamstrings. There's no need to go all the way to the floor in this exercise. You'll most likely find that as you get just past your knees, you'll start to feel a good stretch in your hamstring. At that point, thrust your hips forwards and then start again with the next rep. Okay, and of course, we can't have a leg day without some kind of squat variation. We're gonna be doing the goblet squat for three sets of 12 to 15 reps. This is gonna be a real leg burner. You wanna take quite a wide stance with your toes pointing out 
You want to make sure that your knees are always going outwards on a squat. Never let your knees cave in. You're going to hold a dumbbell like you see on screen. You want to make sure that bottom part of your hands on both hands is firmly supporting the dumbbell. And keep the dumbbell close to your chest. Make sure you keep your chest up. You don't want your back bending forwards when you're doing your squats. Squat down as far as you can comfortably go and then push back up through your heels. This is going to be another exercise that primarily targets your quads, but it is more of a compound exercise so you will find that your glutes and hamstrings get involved too, as well as your calves. Speaking of calves, you can't be having a leg day without some sort of calf exercise. So we're going to go for three sets of 15 to 20 reps on a calf raise. We're going to be utilising what we've got around the house so we're going to do calf raises on the stairs. You want to make sure you get a good stretch on the calves before you push up and squeeze. At the top of the movement, I like to think of trying to look over a high fence. Okay, so now we're finished with our legs. We're going to move on to a couple of ab movements to end our workout. And we're going to start with a classic sit-up. We're going to do three sets here of 10 to 20 reps, depending on how strong your core is. And you're going to want to use something to support your feet. Here I'm using a sofa. If you do have a partner that can hold your feet down, that would be even more ideal. As with all ab exercises, it is really important that you get your breathing right. On the way down on your sit-up, you wanna take a deep breath into your stomach. And when you perform your sit-up, you wanna make sure you breathe out hard. And finally, we're gonna finish the workout with some leg raises. We're gonna do three sets of 10 to 15 reps here. And if you find leg raises a little bit too challenging, you can of course do some knee raises, which you'll see on the screen in a moment. Pick which one is right for you at the time and try to work your way up to some leg raises. Again, a pull up and dip station could be a good idea here. You can put yourself onto that and do some leg raises that way, but there's absolutely no problem with doing them from the floor. You're gonna to wanna to put your hands underneath your bum to give you some support. And the closer you put your hands, the easier the movement's gonna be. You wanna try and work on bringing your hands out as far as you can to a point where they're no longer under your bum, but just to your side. But to begin with, keep the hands underneath your bum, try it out, make sure you get your breathing right, raise those legs up, and that's the main thing that's going to target your core. Okay, and that is the leg day done. Now for some of you that can only do three days a week, or you just want to start on three days a week because you're new, this might be the end of the video for you. Go through those free workouts consistently over a few weeks, let me know how you get on in the comments section below, and if you feel like you can do a little bit more, we're now going to move on to workout four of the week, which is going to be your upper body. But before that, this is where I would recommend taking a rest day. So perhaps you start your week on a Sunday like me. I'll do push on the Sunday, pull on the Monday, legs on the Tuesday, and then rest on Wednesday. But I know a lot of people are not like me. So if you do push on a Monday, pull on a Tuesday, and legs on a Wednesday, then maybe Thursday can be your rest day. With that being said, let's move on to the upper body session. So let's begin your upper body day. Our first exercise is going to be a flat dumbbell press and we're going to be doing three sets of 8 to 12 reps. Ideally you would have a bench here but don't worry if not because you can do them like you see on the screen right now on the floor. The most important thing for a dumbbell chest press like this is to keep your elbows tucked in and keep your scapula retracted. And this is going to help you to bring your chest out and make sure you're focusing the movement on the chest. The next exercise is going to be a close dumbbell row. We did a dumbbell row on our pull day, which was focused on our upper back. But this row, as we're going to bring our elbows into our body, is going to focus on the lats. As you're pulling up, keep your elbows as close to your body as possible. And make sure you bring your elbows up and back to target the lats. Okay, and now we're going to move on to some shoulders. Hitting those front delts. As we know from before, your delts are your shoulders. And we're going to be doing some dumbbell front raises. We're going to do this for three sets of 8 to 12 reps once again. And you want to make sure that you keep your arms straight, lock your elbows in place, and simply raise that dumbbell up in front of you like you see on screen. Our next exercise is going to focus on those traps up here. We're going to be doing some dumbbell shrugs. And again, we're going to be doing three sets of 8 to 12 reps. When you perform a dumbbell shrug, you want to make sure you keep your arms straight and locked in place, and simply focus on raising your shoulders up, and bringing them slowly back down. All right, so now we're gonna move on to some biceps with some dumbbell incline curls. The idea behind this exercise is you want to do a curl with your elbows behind you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit right on the edge of the chair, lean ourselves backwards, place our upper back on the back of the chair, and you're gonna drop your arms behind you. And as you see, we're just gonna do a dumbbell curl like normal, keeping those elbows behind our body. This is gonna target the long head of the bicep. And we're doing 10 to 15 reps here for three sets. 
And to finish off this workout, the last muscle in our upper body which we haven't trained, our triceps, we're gonna do some dumbbell skull crushers. Again, we're gonna be doing three sets of 10 to 15 reps. And if you have a bench, use it. If not, you can do what I'm doing here and just do these from the floor. Make sure when you're doing these dumbbell scroll crushers that you don't allow your shoulders to come forwards and backwards. You wanna keep your shoulders firmly locked in place. Then you want to bring the dumbbells down to the floor and then press back up with your triceps and make sure you get a good squeeze at the top of the movement. Okay, so that's our fourth workout complete. Let me know guys if you have any questions in the comments down below. Let me know if you're enjoying this video so far. Let me know what I could do better next time. I'm very much open to feedback. But now we're gonna go on to the last workout of the week. This is gonna be leg day number two, your lower body day. So we're gonna start this final workout of the week with one of the more challenging exercises in this workout program, some Nordic hamstring curls. What you wanna do is get your feet and your ankles secured in place. As you can see here, I've got my feet underneath the sofa. If you can get your ankles underneath something as well, that will be better, but this should work if you can't do that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly lower your body down to the floor until you can't hold yourself in place any longer with your hamstrings, at which point you're gonna let yourself drop, catch yourself with your hands, and then you're gonna push yourself up off the floor and try and curl your body weight back up to the starting position. However, if you're unable to secure your feet in place like you see here or better, you can just do a single leg dumbbell RDL as you can see on screen now. To make things a little bit more fun as we have already done RDL this week, I'd urge you to give these Nordic hamstring curls a try. But of course, if you can't do them with the facilities that you've got, the dumbbell RDL will be just fine. Okay, so those Nordic hamstring curls have targeted our hamstrings. Now we're gonna move on to a quad focus exercise with dumbbell walking lunges. We're gonna do these for three sets of eight to 12 reps, and you're gonna try and keep quite a narrow stance when you do these. You can put your leg down in the middle if you need to, but try and work your way up to bringing your leg all the way through without resting in the middle. For our next exercise, we're gonna target the glutes with three sets of eight to 12 reps on a dumbbell hip thrust. If you have a bench for this exercise, this is gonna be ideal, but if not, you can do what you can see on your screen now, what I did, and lean your back up against your sofa. Make sure at the top of the exercise you squeeze your glutes together to get a good contraction. And guys, if you need to make it easier for yourself, you can do your hip thrusts from the floor. Try both of them, see what works best for you, and if you can't do them against the sofa, then work your way up to that. Now for our next exercise, we're gonna target the calves, and we're gonna do some donkey calf raises. With these calf raises, we're gonna do three sets of 15 to 20 reps, and to perform this exercise, simply put your hands onto your sofa like you can see in the video demonstration. Make sure at the top of the movement you hold there for a second or two and squeeze your calves. And as we're not using extra weight, we're going for higher reps by going into that 15 to 20 rep range. Okay, so now we've trained every muscle in our legs, we're gonna move on to a little bit of abs, starting with some planks. Here we're gonna do three sets of 30 seconds to one minute, and you wanna make sure you keep your core braced the whole time. Take a deep breath into your stomach and clamp down, and make sure you bring your stomach up. Don't let your back drop down, you wanna keep a straight back throughout the whole exercise. If you find planks too challenging, you can keep your knees on the floor, but I do urge you to work your way up to getting them knees off the floor and staying on your elbows and toes but that easier option is there if you need it. And finally, we're gonna finish off by targeting the obliques with some dumbbell Russian twists. We're gonna do three sets of 10 to 15 reps here. If you're unable to do Russian twists with a weight just yet, you can do them without the weight, but try and work your way up over the next few weeks. Okay, and that is all five of the workouts complete. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. It's taken me a long time to film and create this. I really hope that this helps some people out. Please let me know your progress in the comments below. Let me know if you try this workout split and let me know how you get on. Also, comment down below what you'd like to see next. I wanna provide the content that you guys wanna see. So let me know what you'd like to see from me. Thank you all so much for watching the video. As I said before, make sure you leave the video a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and comment down below dumbbell if you watch the whole video. I'd really appreciate that from you all. But until next time, guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.